Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So if you watched my Suron video last week, I installed the Back 4000 from Greenline Engineering, and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, if you In that video, you can see I had a couple of little issues and finally got it working at 75% power. You know, bike cut out a couple of times. Now to be fair, they tell you that's gonna happen. In fact, I think anybody who sells that controller tells you with the stock battery, if you push it too hard, it's gonna cut out. Um, make adjustments, and you know if you really want better performance, you should have a bigger battery or a battery with your BMS bypassed. So and it's funny when I got this bike, I didn't think I was going to go down the rabbit hole of fooling around with it, and uh, you know now I'm like five rabbits deep. And I think the issue is, you know, when you're used to riding things that perform a little bit better, you know, you want you want a little juice when you twist that throttle. So today in the shop, I am going to bypass the BMS system on my stock battery. I'm going to be really careful doing that because uh, these things can be dangerous. But, you know, there's a million videos on, on how to do it. It's relatively straightforward. So I'm not going to make a BMS bypass video. I'm just going to show you how to make a little harness if you want to do it yourself, which is really, really simple. And uh, just give you a couple of little tips. And then I'm going to put the bypass battery in the bike it's a crappy, rainy day here, but uh, we're going to take a ride, crank the power up, and see, uh, see where we go with that. So let's take a look at how to do this. All right, so my workbench is a mess because, like many of us, I've got multiple projects going on at the same time. But you can see I've got my battery out and opened up and ready to go here. So to actually go ahead and do this, really all you need is a little bit of wire, and I'm using 10 gauge wire in this case, uh, which is a little heavier than the 12 gauge wire that's going from the negative side of the battery up to the BMS today. So I figure a little heavier is better. I've got a, a six gauge butt connector there. I've got 10 gauge connectors on the end. Obviously you need a little bit of heat shrink tubing. I've got a bunch of different sizes. You can see I've got a, a bunch of different connectors. An O-ring pick or a gasket pick is really heavy, really handy when you're doing the bypass to get the existing insulation off of those battery terminals. You need a decent crimper, you need wire strippers. I've got a heat gun, and I'm guessing most of you watching this video fall into one of two categories. Either you're like me, and you're constantly fooling around with all of this stuff. You can see I actually restore motorcycles. I have a lot of fun doing that. And you've got a selection of these tools and you can't stop fiddling with stuff or you're just beginning your journey like I did many, many years ago and you're starting to collect it. So all I've done, I cut this wire into about six inch pieces, stripped both ends, crimped on terminals on the side that's gonna go to the battery and I'm gonna heat shrink those. The other three ends go into the six gauge butt connector. And when we're done, we're gonna heat shrink that end too, or actually slide a piece over there. And uh, when we're done, we have a harness that we can put in the way you can see in any of those other videos. So I'm gonna be really careful and make sure that from an insulation perspective, I've got my bases covered. And uh, really that's all there is to it. We'll take a look at this harness when we're done. All right, so here's the next step, basically, strip the other end of that 10 gauge wire. I twisted the three ends together before I put it in this butt connector. And then I crimped the heck out of it with my heavy duty crimper here. Uh, and then you wanna pull on these and make sure they're not coming out. So trying to get three 10 gauge wires into one six gauge butt connector is a little bit challenging, which is why I twisted them together and uh, made sure I had this right. Now I'm gonna heat shrink both ends and then I'm gonna heat shrink this again after I actually put it in the, uh, in the battery. So let's, uh, let's just do that, get it prepared to go in the battery, and uh, we'll take a quick look at that. All right, and here we are ready to actually be installed in the battery. This extra piece of heat shrink, I'm gonna slide on there before I put it in. I will more than likely electrical tape this connection before I slide that heat shrink over once it's in the battery, just to be safe. Now, in reality, this is about a dollar's worth of wire, a couple of dollars worth of heat shrink tubing, and a couple of dollars worth of connectors. Now, that being said, I had all of this stuff laying around. If you don't, then looking at the 
bypass harnesses that are available from some of the companies out there that cost you know 25 to 30 bucks it's probably worth spending the 25 to 30 bucks but if you want to start to learn how to do things if you've got some of these tools laying around or you want to start to actually put your tools together this is a really easy do-it-yourself project hey i said i'm not going to show you how to do a bypass and i'm not but a couple of quick little safety tips if you watch the videos on how to do this, people talk about, hey, be careful once you actually make this connection and don't let the other ends touch anything. And that's really, really good advice. And so to be really careful, I just put an extra piece of heat shrink tubing on the end, just slid it on there. And then when I'm ready, I slide it off. And when I'm, when I'm working on the battery, I keep the terminals covered with electrical tape. All right, my final piece of advice for actually doing a BMS bypass. When you go to strip the negative wire, it's a stranded wire and it's very fine in there. And little pieces might fall out and actually fall down onto your battery. Now, you don't want that happening. You don't want those in there. I put down this blue rubber glove and then the tiny little pieces, and no matter how careful you are, a couple of tiny little pieces are gonna come out. They fall on the glove, not in the battery. You can get rid of them. And then you have peace of mind knowing you don't have little teeny pieces of wire floating around inside your battery. So really helpful. I would recommend you do that and just be careful. All right, so here we are on the bike. Battery with the bypassed BMS in place. I cranked on the Egg Rider app, I cranked it up to 7,000 watts and 100%. So without any further ado, let's see what we got here. Without even getting on the throttle. Holy crap. ride done so bypassing that battery management system cranking everything up to 7,000 watts and letting it rip what a difference feels more like my uh, more like my YZ now more like a more like a dirt bike it's amazing the amount of potential that uh, that these bikes have that you're just not getting from the factory now I don't like the idea of having that BMS bypassed I'm gonna leave it this way for a while and uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on it and be really really careful but you know it's it's in there for a reason in my other video where I installed the uh, the back 4000 and you see it cutting off at the end that's the BMS doing its job right it's it's you know that overcurrent limit now from the factory it's probably set a little bit conservative a little bit low so I think as long as you're not nuts with this it's okay but what a what a heck of a difference this bike is gonna be a lot of fun now so before I close for today, I've got one question that my Suron viewers, I'm sure can answer for me. So let's just take a quick look at the bike. All right, Suron viewers, here's where I could use your help. I've got a longer rear fender. Doesn't quite make it all the way to the back of the tire, but it's significantly longer than the stock one. Now, if I compare it to 
the back fender on my YZ125, right? That extends quite a bit further. I don't have the RM in the shop, so I can't show you that. But basically what happens is anytime I go out and it's wet or muddy, this is what the back of my riding gear ends up looking like, right? Not only the back of my riding gear, but the back of my helmet too. So you end up covered in mud. So my question to you guys is, does anybody have a back fender that actually prevents that from happening? Would love to know. So if you do know, shoot me a link in the, uh, in the comments. I would really appreciate it. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, do me a favor, if you, if you like these videos, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it.